All right, this is second grade module four, lesson eight. And students are going to be using math drawings to kind of relate that to the official standard algorithm. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, in our previous um, video, we had, let's say we had like 15 plus, oh, I'll just make this simple, 22. Uh, let's make it 23, okay? Now, in our previous video, students on paper, they were given, they would be using manipulatives, essentially. And they were given like a, a big old huge place value chart on paper, right? And then it would sit on their desk. And then they would use manipulatives of some sort. I personally recommend using pennies uh, because that's one of the cheapest manipulatives you can buy. You go to the bank and you give them a $5 bill and you get 500 pennies. And those 500 pennies will last you for years. Um, anyway, but you would have this big old piece of paper right here with a place value chart uh, printed on it. And the kids have a pile of pennies. And then they use models, uh, use those pennies to model the problem. They'd put a penny here, and then they'd put five pennies here. One, two, three, four, five pennies. And that represents the number 15. And then they take some more pennies, and they put two pennies here and three pennies here. And that is how they would model the problem. In this case, there's no, um, no carrying. There's no composing ten ones to equal a 10. And so in this case, it would be pretty easy to see that the answer is 38 because nothing needs to be regrouped. Now today, so that was basically using manipulatives. Today, our students are going to be learning how to use math drawings. So they're going to be drawing these, the, essentially a representation of this. They're going to be drawing it on their paper. And what it's going to look like is a line, and well, we could do a T. And uh, to model 15, they're going to model, and I'll do it in red, they're going to put a circle with a 10, and then they're going to do five circles with ones. So that's how they're going to draw it in their picture, on their paper. And then to model 23, they're going to draw two circles with tens, and then they're going to model three circles with ones. And that's how they're going to model. And again, you can see that no regrouping is necessary. The answer is 38. And in case, in both cases, we would record it on the standard algorithm like this. Down the road, uh, instead of drawing tens or ones, they're going to be drawing dots like I've been doing over here. But right now we're emphasizing the place value, so we're going to be asking the kids to draw the tens and the ones, and the tens and the ones, down the road. I don't know if it's in second grade or definitely it happens by third grade. They, they revert to this, um, they change to this dot method instead. It's a, it's a lot more efficient. So we're going to solve vertically. We're being asked to solve vertically. So we're going to put 26 plus 35. And now we're going to model it over here. So these are the tens. These are the ones. And let's model it. So 26 is going to look like two circles with tens. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Six circles with ones in it. And then to model 35, we're going to draw three circles here in the tens column and five in the ones column. And we're going to fill those in with ones. And now we're going to bundle as necessary. So when we count our ones, we can see that we've got six up here plus five down here. So that means we've got 11 ones. And so that means we can bundle 10 of them together. Let's see, 10 right here. There's 10 ones, and these 10 ones equal a 10. And so now over here on our standard algorithm, we can say that, well, 6 plus 5 is 11, but that means we can bundle an extra one, and we have one left over. So that's our 11. 
So when we do 6 plus 5 and get 11, that means we have 10 that we can cash in for a column in, or for 1 in the tens place, and we have 1 left over. And now we can add, we have 2 plus 3 plus 1, so that's 2 tens plus 3 tens plus 1 more 10, and together that gives us 6, so our answer is 61. Now, down the road, I'm going to quickly show you this because it's easy enough. Down the road, the kids are going to be uh, just doing dots. And so when they model 26, they're just going to do two dots in the tens and one, two, three, four, five, six in the ones, and then three dots in the tens and one, two, three, four, five in the ones. And then they're going to kind of do essentially the same process that we did up here only uh, it's just with dots. It's a little quicker. So 6 and 4 gives us 10. Those 10 come over here and equal 1 in the tens place. So you can see that we have left over. We have 1 in the ones place and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in the tens place. Um, this is not yet. <laughs> I just want to give you a sneak preview into the future. But right now, we just want our little second graders doing this. And let's do a little bit of practice. So we have, let's see, we have 35 plus 27. And we are going to uh, model that over here. Here's our tens place. Here's our ones place. Now let's model the 35. So that's going to be 3 in the tens place and 5 in the ones place. That's 35. Modeling 27, it's going to be 2 in the tens place, and 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 in the ones place. And now we can see that in the ones place we have way more than 10. We have these 5 plus these 5 equal 10, because 5 plus 7 is 12. So those equal, we can compose that and bundle them together to equal a 10 in the tens place. So how do we record this over here in our standard algorithm? Well, 5 plus 7 is 12, because we can see 5 plus 7 is 12. But we can take these two leftovers and write them here, and then the fact that we had 10, because 12 is more than 10, these 10 can be bundled into the tens column. So the way we're, we're going to record that is we're going to put a little 1 right here. So this little 1 right here is the fact that these guys got bundled and went put right here together as a 10. And now we have 3 tens plus 2 tens plus 1 new 10. That's like Three tens plus two tens plus one new ten. So three plus two plus one gives us six. And so the answer is 62. And we've got to do a word problem because they're fun and they're easy. So this question says for us to solve, draw, and bundle the place value disks on this place value chart right here. So let's get going. So it says, uh, 28 second grade students went on a field trip to the zoo. The other 24 students stayed at school. How many second grade students are there? So if we wanted to model what this would look like with a tape diagram, we'd say, all right, 28 students went to the zoo. 24 students stayed at school. How many students do we have all together? And if we want to write that in a vertical addition problem. There it is, 28 plus 24. And so we're going to model that in our place value chart over here. And to model 28 plus 24, we're going to begin by modeling 28. So there's our two tens and eight ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are our 8 1, so that's 28. 
Now we're going to model 24, so that's going to be 2 in the tens column. 1, 2, 3, 4 in the ones column. So there's our 28 plus 24. And if we add up all of our ones, we have 8 up here plus 4 down here, that's 12. So that means way over here, we're going to have 2 left over in the, except I want to do it in black. We're going to have 2 left over in our ones column. And we can bundle 10 of those, 12, and put 1 in the tens column. So let's see, what would that look like over here? Well, we know we would take these 8, the top 8, plus 2 more. So there's our 10. These 10 can be bundled together and equal a new one in the tens column. So that's where you can see this 2 left over is right here. And the fact that we bundled 10 into here is why we have this 1 right here. So now we have 2 plus 2 plus 1. That's 2 plus 2 plus 1. And that equals 5. And so our answer is 52. There are 52 second graders. Second graders. And that is second grade module 4 lesson 8 where we are finally starting to um, use the standard, what looks like the standard algorithm, but we're using the place value chart to uh, scaffold our students' thinking so that this algorithm makes sense rather than is just some arbitrary rule.